In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. The Lord Jesus calls us together to be members of his body, to be united in him. So let us open our hearts to receive his mercy, his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you pray for us always. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, you are perfect in unity and true charity. Grant your faithful one heart and one mind that the body of your church, which rests on the confession of the truth, may flourish in harmony and be made strong in enduring unity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were at that time without Christ, alienated from the community of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. He made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace and might recognize both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the Holy Ones and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. Through him, the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. The Word of the Lord. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. I will hear what God proclaims. The Lord, for he proclaims peace. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him glory dwelling in our land. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. <coughs> Kindness and truth shall meet, justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. 
the Lord speaks of peace to his people. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and salvation along the way of his steps. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. The Gospel of the Lord. Have no fear, the tickle in my throat is fall allergies, not COVID. You can't imagine how monumental is the change that St. Paul is talking about in this letter to the Ephesians. He's talking about a division being brought together in Christ. And the division that he's talking about is the division between Jews and Gentiles, because these were two completely separate worlds. Jews didn't want to have anything to do with Gentiles. Gentiles did not want to have much to do with Jews. There was this complete separation. In fact, they were so separate that St. Peter, when he was invited to have supper at the house of a non-Jew, he really hesitated because he was brought up being told, have nothing, nothing to do with people who aren't Jews. So there's this huge separation. And what St. Paul is talking about is that Jesus, through his death on the cross, has opened up a way of salvation both for Jews and for Gentiles so that they together would be part of the church. That was a huge adjustment for the first community that they would see through this division that they grew up with and to be one with people no matter what their background was, whether they were Jew or Gentile, to realize that the more important thing is that they were all one in Christ, all one in Christ. And that was what broke down that wall of hostility that, that St. Paul is talking about. We, we live in a time where there's all sorts of divisions, not between Jews and Gentiles, but between people with different political ideas, different political parties, different approaches to our social ills. There's all sorts of divisions. But what St. Paul is reminding us is that Jesus is the one who calls us to be together. Not to stoke the fires of division, but to look at what we have in common. And especially we who are Christians. We're Christians and followers of Jesus before we're a member of a political party or any faction or any group that first of all and foremost, we are one in Christ and we're called to treat one another as brothers and sisters. It's an important reminder to us at this time of great division and tension in our midst. The gospel is a story about Jesus telling people 
to be vigilant, to be waiting for the arrival of Jesus like servants who are waiting for their, their boss, their master, to come home from a wedding. So the master is out partying at this wedding reception. They have no idea when he's coming back. He could be partying all night long. Who knows? But their job is to be ready to open the door when he comes. And so Jesus says, you have to be as vigilant as those servants, ready to open the door to God wherever he comes, whenever he comes, ready to open the door to Jesus whenever he comes to us. And he often comes to us in unexpected ways, and he often comes to us through people we don't expect. So Jesus calls us to be open because he says those servants who are ready to open the door will so impress the master that, that he'll put them at the table. He'll sit them down, he'll put an apron on, and he'll serve them. It's the great reversal. So the one who is the master becomes the servant, just as Jesus is the one who comes not to be served but to serve us, and we're called to serve one another. So let's remember these, these words of St. Paul, who talks about Jesus, who breaks down a wall of division. Let's remember the words of Jesus, who calls us to be ready, to be vigilant, to open the door whenever Jesus comes. Let's offer our prayers to the Lord. We pray for the church that we may be guided in the days and weeks ahead, guided by the word of God, guided by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. For all those who are torn by division and dissension, for families who are going through difficulties, for communities that are divided. We pray that God's peace and God's unity may come to them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have asked for our prayers, those who trust in our prayers for them. We remember John Pittman, all those who have asked us to pray for them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are sick, those who need God's healing. We pray for Marciana and Annette, all those we know who are sick. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have died. The Mass today is offered for Jeanette Hillman. We also remember Dominic Sheehan, on the first anniversary of his death, that Jeanette and Dominic and all those who have gone before us in faith may be welcomed at the table of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. And for all the prayers that are within our hearts, let's pause for a moment in silence. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, in drawing us to yourself, you draw us to one another. Give us what we need to be disciples of your Son. Receive our prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. 
fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and our lives may be acceptable to God, the loving Father. O God, who renew us in your image through your sacraments and your commandments, mercifully guide our footsteps in your paths that through these sacrificial offerings which we bring, we may possess the gift of charity for which you have taught us to hope through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and to raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation. And having filled her with life by the power of your Spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church as one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis, our Pope, Leonard, our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place to live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all together to everlasting life.
So just remember to come up the center aisle, single file, beginning with the people on my left, and then the folks on the right, and the folks in the back. Um, and if coming forward is a difficulty because of health reasons, um, just stay where you are. And after the others have come forward, just raise your hand. I'll bring communion to you in your place.
Let us pray. O Lord, we have received the sacrament of unity. Grant us that living in your house in holy accord, we may possess the peace we hand on and preserve the peace we have received through Christ our Lord. So the gift shop is opened after Mass if you want to stop by the gift shop. The entrance to the gift shop is by the side door of Pilgrim Hall. So it's on this side of Pilgrim Hall. You'll see, you'll see the signs um, guiding you to the entrance. Also, you'll notice that we are completely out of candles. Um, the folks who usually deliver the candles to us forgot to deliver them. When I called them yesterday, they said, we'll get right on it sometime between now and Friday. So, um, so anyway, uh, what you can do, well, you can light a candle in your heart, um, but if you want to go to the, the gift shop and get a candle there, they have candles uh, available there. You can see some people have already done that um, if you want to bring the candle back out. So, that's, uh, so hopefully by Friday, maybe even sooner, we'll, we'll have our candles. Also on Saturday, if you, if you like to pick up sticks, we are having a cleanup day at the Grotto this Saturday from 10 until noon. Um, we're just going to kind of police the area and gather branches and sticks that have fallen down uh, from the recent storms just to kind of neaten things up uh, before the snow falls. So that's this Saturday between 10 and 12. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone.